Welcome to Unity Tips and Tricks. In this video we're going to take a look at a couple of different ways that we can export our animations from Max into Unity. To start off with we'll need to fix our coordinate axes here which are Z up by default in Max. Um, but Unity uses Y up so in order to fix this let's go to the hierarchy panel select effect pivot only and rotate that 90 degrees up so that we have the Y axis right there. Okay, so now we have those axes lined up as good as we're going to get them. And I say that because the x-axis here in Max will actually be flipped in Unity. This is due to the fact that Max uses a right-handed coordinate system, but Unity uses a left-handed one. And to understand the differences between those two, I encourage you guys to do a Google search and just kind of read up on it yourself, because people have explained that far better than I can. Um, so just know that it's something we have to deal with, but it really shouldn't affect anything that we do. Now we're just going to make a couple of simple animations to show movement along Unity's x-axis, actually this way, and its z-axis. So we'll leave pivot mode, move into translation, and start keying it up. Maybe go to 25. Um, Unity's x-axis is the negative x, so we'll do that. And we'll come back to zero here. Then now we want to move along Unity's z-axis, which see the pivot going along this way. Um, we can start this at 50 again and let's move along here and return that back to zero. So now we'll take a look at the first method of exporting animations into Unity which is to just export it all in one file. So if you come down here to export We'll call this um, companion with all anims. Save that out. We need to make sure we have animation checked. And to preserve the texture, we have embed media. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And let's look at Unity. So all that stuff pops in there. And let's go ahead and put this into the scene. And when we play this, what we're looking for is that uh, the movement actually is aligned with the axes that we thought they'd be. So we we're expecting this to move along the x-axis and followed by a movement in the z-axis. So that worked pretty well, but the intention was not really to have one animation along both axes. It was more to have two separate animations, each of which moved along an axis. So in order to fix that up, we can come back to the asset here in the project panel and scroll down to uh, animations right here. So you actually have to manually add this that this way. We can give it a name. We could say uh, uh, X movement. And then now we have to actually give it the frame numbers. And since we just saw that, we can say uh, 1 to 50. That's fine. And let's make another one using those same frame numbers. Uh, call it the Z movement. And we know that starts at it actually kind of overlaps at 50 and it goes to 100. So now if we come back to our object, we'll apply that and let's look at the animation component. Here it actually lists the first animation as X movement. So when this plays automatically, we'd expect just the X to happen now. So that method's okay, but if you're working in a team where the artist is giving you these animations and you're just bringing them in, it requires you to know all the frame numbers, which is not terribly convenient when you have a lot of animations. So that's where this second method comes in handy. If we go back to Max, we can actually uh, export each one of these animations individually. So to start off with, um, I'll export a sort of base model with no animation. Uh, I'm just using the same thing. We'll call it something different. We'll just say uh, just call this companion, we'll save, and now we don't want any animation. So that should be in there now. But now we want to have those animations just sort of automatically attach themselves without anyone having to uh, edit frame numbers. So what we can do for this is if we select our object, we can go to our timeline here and we can restrict what it shows. And you do that by right clicking here on the play button and we'll actually modify the start end time. So the first animation we know 
happens between 0 and 50. We'll set that, hit OK. And now we'll go to export again. So the real trick here for Unity is a naming convention. Uh, you'll actually select the companion again, which is the model that this animation applies to, and we'll use the at symbol followed by the name of this animation. So I think before we call it X movement, um, I don't know if dashes are okay, let's get that out of there. So X movement will be the first one. And we do want this to have animation. Go ahead and export that out. So let's come back to our timeline here and adjust it to get the second animation. We'll say 50 to 100. That's good. Now let's export again. Um, so this time, the only name difference is going to be, this is the Z movement animation. So we'll save that and go back to Unity. OK, so now you can see that we have the companion and his two animations. So if we select um, companion, you can actually come down here into its animation component and see that it automatically it has the X movement and Z movement added in there. So I'm going to get rid of our previous companion that had everything on there and add in the new one now. So it starts off with the X movement as well, which if we hit play, we will see. And that works. And just as a quick test, let's make sure that uh, the Z movement actually does what we think. And that's the uh, one for the other model, actually. Uh, the one we called here with the add symbol was this Z movement. So I hit play and now you have it. So there's two uh, ways you can do it with the second way probably being the preferred way for working with the team. Thanks for watching.